Greetings, this is Dan the Man, the manufactured home man with the manufactured home plan talking about site selection for your home. And this is where you can save the most money is uh, in site selection. Uh, one time I had some folks that I had, to, I had to go about and look at their property and find out why they was getting so much water and mildew under their home and drive out to their property and find out that if you live in East Texas, there's something called uh, crawdads, and crawdads have crawdad chimneys. There's little mud piles, middle mud bogs that they build up. They dig down in the ground and they they spit that mud out and they create these chimneys. Anyway, this property where these people had chosen to put their home was right in the middle of crawdad mud holes all over. So if you have that kind of a of a site, you probably don't want to go in that part of the property. You need to find a higher a higher point. Uh, and so that leads me to the first thing about site selection is you want to find the highest point on a property. Sometimes you have a smaller property, uh, you know, a half acre, and you don't have a whole lot of choices. You got to go right in the middle. So if that part of the property is not the highest, you're going to have to make it the highest. And, and that's uh, the first thing you do is you pick the highest point of the property, find the natural crown, and then you uh, make sure you're above the grade and you find a grade, you can, there's several ways you can find a grade. The cheap way to find your grade is simply uh, just a string line, a 20 foot string line with uh, one of those little levels that hang on the string and you run that level and you kind of find out which way the, the, the ground is, uh, the, which way the water drainage is heading and, and from there you find your highest spot. So once you have found the highest spot, you want to shave off the first four inches or so of foliage, get all the grass and the dirt out of there because that material when it dies can decompose and then once it settles, you're gonna, you'll have some settling on your home. So you wanna dig down to where you're, you're not talking about any more uh, organic material that can decompose. And then you wanna bring in, now the best material that's the least expensive is called select fill. It's about a, anywhere from 110 to 140, $150 a load. Now, some people recommend gravel, but gravel does not compact and it, it, it can shift and move and it's very expensive, 500 or plus per, uh, per truckload. I know there's places in Austin and in the hill country where, where gravel does work pretty good, but if you're looking for the, the best material, most economic material, it's called select fill. It's 60% clay and about 30 to 40% sand. And, and that is, that's good stuff uh, to build your foundation with. So you wanna find your highest point on the property, you wanna shave that foliage off, and then you want to uh, bring in your select fill. You know, a good rule of thumb is uh, you're gonna need a minimum of, of, of three loads of select fill and these are dump truck loads per half of house. So if you're in a double wide, you're gonna need six loads. If you're in a single section home, you're gonna need three. And of course that goes up exponentially if, you, if you're really on a, 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 on a slope. But if you're on a slope, there is, another, uh, there is another solution. You're still gonna bring in some dirt and create a dome effect, but you can't get it level because you're on too much of a grade. So it would cost too much money to bring in enough dirt to get the site level. So what you're gonna do is, got a picture here, this one right here. And what you're gonna do is you're going to create either a berm right here where this line is, or you're gonna create a uh, drain, a French drain. And they sell those at Lowe's and Home Depot. And you just dig down and you put this drain in there. And when water comes down the hill, it's gonna go into the drain and go out some four inch pipe or three inch pipe to another part of the property. And so you're diverting that, that, uh, that moisture away from your home. Because the biggest enemy you have with, with a manufactured home is moisture. So you have to create the highest spot. And then if there are water issues, you have to divert the water. Um, putting on gutters once the home is built is, is important because that'll divert water away from running down the side of your home and trying to get underneath the home. So those are uh, important factors. Um, a lot of you are, are going to buy a manufactured home from somebody that's doing tape and textured sheetrock and they're going to, part of the sale is going to be they're going to say you have to have concrete. Concrete is good 
but remember that concrete weighs a lot and concrete settles too. Just like the home can cause the ground to settle, concrete can, can cause the ground to settle. So concrete does not uh, eliminate the possibility of settling. I've, I've had customers that, and our homes are built in such a way that the frames have very little to no bend and give, and concrete is not a specific requirement even though we do all sheetrock, we don't do any mobile home vinyl. But the manufacturer that you find may demand that you have concrete and concrete is good for resale value. But if you're gonna pour concrete, just go ahead and spend a little extra and have the FHA approved uh, drawings uh, because that way you're gonna, you're gonna be able to sell your home much, much easier. So we, we do recommend concrete, but it's not absolutely necessary with a really well-built home. What is necessary is being at the highest point of the property and making sure that no water drains underneath the home. So how big do you want this pad to be? When you're building your pad, if, if this right here was the size of my home, I wanna make sure that I'm going about seven to 10 feet past uh, the width and the length of the home. And that's, a, a, a pretty swift um, decline. So the pad is gonna be fairly level. And then once you get to the perimeter of the home, you're going to let that fall about six or eight inches uh, every couple of feet so that water drains away from the home. That's the whole object here. And so if you had a uh, 56 foot long home, you'd wanna go at least uh, 66 to 70 feet long and if your home was uh, 28 feet wide you'd want to go about 38 feet wide you can go a little you know maybe 40 feet and that'll give you the drainage uh, specs that you need okay so make sure that the person who's doing your dirt work is somebody that somebody else knows and can tell you that they've done good work before that is that that's going to be an important factor it's not rocket science and we do supply and your the dealership that you choose may supply uh, the, all the drawings. And so you can do this yourself and that's where you save a lot of money because dirt is 150, you know, top end per load. And so if you needed, let's say five loads of dirt, you know, you're only looking at around $500. Whereas the guy that does the work is gonna charge you a minimum of a thousand or $1,200. We're usually around 11 or $1,200 to do the dirt work on a relatively, uh, level pad for single section homes and 2200 for double section homes so that kind of gives you an idea of what you can expect if you're doing gravel it's much higher so that's again why I recommend select fill but make sure that the person that that is doing the dirt work is someone the dealer knows and can say yeah we they've done a lot of work for us before in the past and we trust them or make or, or get a few uh, referrals so that you can talk to a couple people and say hey do they do they end up doing what we needed them to do? And if you can, you want to let it sit a few days. If it rains on the pad, that's good. That helps it to compact. And you want to run your equipment over the pad several times to, to begin to get some compaction uh, for, that, for that pad. But where you can save the most money is picking the right site, finding the highest point on the property, making sure you get rid of foliage, using enough select fill, and if you're doing concrete, you're, you're gonna go FHA concrete footers. What can you expect for FHA footers? Uh, I don't see very many people with single section homes doing FHA footers, but if you do, you're, you're looking at anywhere from 4,500 to 8,500, depending on how close you are to the major city, like the closer we get to Houston, the more expensive it gets. For concrete on double section homes, medium sized homes, I have had 6,500 uh, a few times and uh, all the way up to uh, 11,500. So that's the range. Um, if, if, it's, if it's a lot less than that or a lot more than that, you need to ask a bunch of questions and find out why. And if you message us here, if you like, uh, if you like this video on, on Facebook or just like our page and you message us, we will try to get back to you within 24 hours, answer any questions. My motto is if I don't know, <laughs> I do know somebody that does know. I just reach inside the phone and 
everybody that does contracting work in this business uh, is in the phone. Not everybody, but everybody that that I need. And so we can answer your questions that way. All right, so this is Dan the Man. You're with a manufactured home plan, picking your best site, using the right materials. Messages if you need anything. And thank you very much.